Cheese has been made for thousands of years, and although some of the methods for making cheese has changed, the science behind it remains the same. Today we are making a farmhouse cheddar cheese. Whole milk is often used because it has a higher fat content, which adds more flavor to the cheese. We have to monitor the temperature, and our tiger temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as it reaches the right temperature, the milk is removed from the heat. Bacterial culture is added to the milk. What this culture does is that, is what gives acidity to the milk. This milk is hot, hot right now. It's uh, like about 30 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. This process allows the bacteria to start producing lactic acid, which gives cheese its unique flavor and texture. Once the culture dissolves, the milk is gently stirred. Then the milk must sit for a period of time. The process of making cheese by hand is slow and meticulous, so a lot of patience is needed. Rennet and calcium chloride are mixed with water and then added to the milk. Calcium chloride gives firmer texture to the curd. Rennet is an enzyme that separates the protein to help thicken the milk mixture. After the mixture is stirred, it must rest in order for it to curdle. The curds are gently cut into cubes. Then it's heated one last time. This is the curds already matted together, and we're gonna drain all the way that's in it. The curds are wrapped in a cloth and then strained. The excess weight cannot be discarded because it's considered harmful to the environment due to its high protein content. However, the whey can be used for energy drinks, baby formula, and even cattle feed. The curd is broken up into small pieces and then mixed with salt. The cheese is placed in a mold and then pressed at different weights in order to remove any remaining moisture. Many cheeses require aging. The aging period can last from a few days to several years. This allows the microbes and enzymes to enhance the texture and flavor of the cheese. Most consumers buy their cheese at a grocery store or a specialty market. In recent history, Americans have acquired a taste for more complex flavors, which in turn has increased the need for different varieties which now can all be found here in one place. When, when I was growing up, Parmesan cheese came in a can and it was green and you shook it on. And then all of a sudden, we found all of these wonderful cheeses, Parmesan and Romano, Asiago, all these different cheeses that they would give you, give you to flavor your dishes with. And, we, and chefs found that they could add a little bit of a better flavor to it. And then instead of grating the cheese and putting it in a refrigerator for two years before you used it, you actually would take the cheese and you'd grate it yourself. To get market, we've always been bringing something different. You know, we want to try something different. So what I end up looking at is, does it sell? I think the most popular cheeses in the world are actually the Brie's and the Chevrolet. But I think in um, the United States, I think the most popular cheeses are probably more like the hard cheeses, cheddar cheese, Monterey Jack, Swiss. There's so many different cheeses that you have to make it simple. There's basically, what I'm gonna say is five categories. You've got your raw cheese. Those are um, very soft cheeses and, and, and they don't have a very long shelf life. Then you move into your blue cheese. Um, then you get into your stinky cheeses. They smell worse than they taste. Then you get into um, soft cheeses, what you might use to slice on a sandwich or something like that. And then you go into your hard cheeses. And those end up being uh, grated cheeses. Most people use those. Then you have cow cheese, sheep cheese, you have goat's cheese. And, and I don't have any right now, but there are other mammals that produce milk that you could make cheese from. <laughs> Cheese is an important ingredient in so many different foods, from cheeseburgers to Mexican food, and of course, pizza. You can find it on almost every restaurant menu. 
We use uh, uh, an imported Pecorino Romano. Very sharp cheese, but it's smooth. We'll do at least between 80 and 100 pounds a week just in that cheese. Mozzarella cheese will go through 10 cases, maybe almost 400 pounds a week. We go through a lot of cheese, and mainly because we, we like combining it with the food, and our customers love it. What good it would be if you picked up a slice of pizza and there was no mozzarella hanging from it. Uh, you know, it gives you that first taste, the, the initial look. Uh, when we put cheese on top of a lasagna or cannelloni or a baked eggplant, that, that settles the dish. It covers it, it holds it together, uh, rather than just having tomato sauce on it. So people are really familiar with cheese and it, it's kind of a comfort. If they're trying something new for the first time, they recognize, oh, cheese is on here, most likely I'm gonna like it. And with the mozzarella, which I use mostly, it's a soft, it, it kind of takes the edge off of uh, any food and gives you a texture when you bite into it. Like, oh yeah, I'm familiar with that. I know it's gonna be good. We'll start with the brie, the herbed brie. There's just something I don't care for on that one. I'm trying the goat cheese and it's very mild and, and very light and um, would be a nice complement to sauces or in a salad or with pasta. It's just delicious. This is the third time I've tried this goat cheese, and, and it, was, it was really good the first two times, but I think this time it's gonna be outstanding, so let's see. Mm, outstanding, very good. Not too tart, just the right amount of tang. So, excellent goat cheese. It's easy to get caught up on how food tastes and forget the health benefits of what we eat every day, but dairy products are full of nutritional value and cheese is no exception. Well, I think we all know that cheese is something that's really healthy for us. We um, realize it comes from milk, and so in some ways it's similar to milk, but it's also a little bit different. So if you think, if this is like an eight ounce glass of milk, if you think of this and then think how much cheese you need to eat to equal the same amount of calcium that you get in this glass of milk, a lot of people don't realize you can take three of these processed cheese slices and that's going to give you the same amount of calcium that you get in this milk. So for people who don't like drinking milk or have trouble digesting it, that could be a different option for them. One of the things that kids really like is string cheese and this is a particular kind of cheese that's actually packaged now in single serving packages and you can get, like this one, a low-fat version, so you're actually getting the benefits of the calcium. Um, two of these have just more calcium than one of this, these glasses of milk, in fact. You know, it's a fun snack to eat. You can kind of peel it off, and it comes into strings like this. And this is something you can pack in school, in kids' lunch boxes, um, take on picnics, take to work for a snack. It's a healthy way to get some cheese in a portion-controlled size, get the health of the calcium, and, and kind of go easy on the fat. I encourage people to make cheese part of their regular diet, um, certainly taking into account the amount of fat that it contains, looking for some lower fat options when those make sense for the dish that you're making, and balancing them, of course, with lots of fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains. A chef could spend a lifetime trying different recipes with cheese, but whether you're a connoisseur or just someone who likes a grilled cheese sandwich, there's no denying the fact that cheese is an extremely diverse food. It adds an opportunity for the chef to combine unique flavors to add a sense to the meal that one wouldn't get without it. So there are over 300 varieties of cheeses just made in the U.S. Cheddar cheese is a well-known factor and it has a degree of saltiness that is very, very acceptable and complements a certain type of meal. And you can do wonderful things with it. You can combine it and make up cheese and beer soup. I like using a mozzarella that it's a little bit more soft, uh, just a background taste, even though it's one of the main ingredients. And you can change a dish with, with a different cheese. When you go from a soft provolone to a mozzarella, uh, a gorgonzola, there's a sweet and a regular gorgonzola, it can change the, the dish so much. So you put your own little special twist on it. Without cheese, there's almost not like a signature on it. Cheese has always been a very big staple in, in our house and our whole family is always have eaten a lot of cheese and um, Velveeta is my favorite one because it's it's so creamy and it melts easily but then I like the mozzarella very well too.
Let's try the blue. I think this is creamy. I think it's smooth. I think it is light compared to a lot of blue cheeses that you taste. This is the brie. And um, I hear from the other folks that it's just delicious, so I'm going to give it a try. Mm, very nice. Cheese is wonderfully complex and versatile. And to think, it all starts with a field and a dairy farm. You know, we're not sure with the volatility in all the markets these days, but we know one thing, the farm will be here. And people need food, and um, people need uh, production agriculture just to stay, to, to stay alive. It's like a wine. There's so many different variations, so many things you can combine it and have fun with it. it it's so much fun to experiment with. People get locked into one cheese, so um, two words, fun and experimental, would, would make it, you should go and buy any type of cheese. If you've never had a cheese before, buy it and try it and see what you think you can do with it. It's produced in vast quantities or carefully made by hand. It's sold at your local grocery store and served at your favorite restaurant. But the final and most important part of the cheese journey is for you to enjoy. Field Trip was made possible by the Cooperative Extension Service at New Mexico State University and by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Cheese. 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 Formaggio. Cheese. If you would like to purchase a copy of this program, please visit krwg.org.